This will be our last video where we study for our uh, first semester final, and this is all about unit six, which is about similar polygons. We're gonna go over similar polygon characteristics, as well as give you some proportion problems, some ratio problems, triangle similarity, right? And as well as uh, proportional parts made by parallel lines. Say that three times fast. Let's get into it. All right, remember if you're one of my students in the corner over here, I'll put the number of the problem from your review packet. If you're not one of my students, you should be able to find this problem helpful anyway. If you're either of those people, go ahead and like this video down below because it's gonna help you, all right? This says, if two polygons are similar, then this first one, their corresponding angles are what? Well, I drew two uh, similar polygons down here. These are just a couple of quadrilaterals. And you can notice that all their angles are congruent, okay? They are congruent. In similar polygons, all their angles are gonna be congruent. Now, likewise, and if two polygons are similar, then their corresponding sides are not congruent. All right, what we need to say instead is that they are proportional. If I were to write all these out, six and three, eight and four, 12 and six, 10 and five, this one is double, all right? So that's gonna be proportional. You could say it's a ratio of two to one. In fact, I'll say it like this, two to one for those two uh, polygons. So we're gonna say they are proportional. Their sides are proportional. Speaking of proportional, we now know how to solve proportions, which is when a fraction equals a fraction, and we solve it by cross multiplying, okay? So on this one, if I cross multiply this way, x times 12 is 12x, and that's going to equal the cross multiplication of the other way, which is 16 times 18. I have no idea what that is. 288, all right, 288. And then we can solve this, of course, by dividing both sides by 12. And let's see, x is going to equal, divided by 12, 24, all right, so 24 is what makes this proportion true, or this fraction that equals that fraction makes those things true. Let's try this one. We can do it with like kind of a binomial or two terms in a certain part of this as well. And the way we do it is still cross multiply this way, eight times X is eight X. But then if you ever see a binomial, whether it's in the top, bottom or wherever, you're gonna take the monomial, the one term, and put it outside the two terms, put that kind of in parentheses, the x minus 12. The reason we do that is because we have to distribute that single term into both of those terms on the inside of the parentheses. Okay, so if I simplify this a little bit, I have now 8x equals 24x, and then minus, let's see, 24 times 12 is 2, 288. That's the same as this one, uh, 288. Okay, so let's see, let me get both my x's together. So I'm going to subtract 24x on both sides like that. And 8x minus 24x is negative 16x, still equals a negative 288. So this is gonna equal something positive since I'm dividing both sides by 16 and they're both, or negative 16 and they're both negative. This gives me x equals negative 288 divided by 16 is 18 is 18, so x equals 18 in this problem and 24 in that one. All right, here we have a word problem, let's read it. It says, in a high school where the ratio of seniors to underclassmen is one to five, there are 125 seniors. How many underclassmen are there? Now, we don't really care if underclassmen is, you know, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, or just freshmen and sophomores or whatever, because it gives us what the ratio is, it's one to five, all right? So what I can do is set up a proportion to help me solve this. So I'm gonna change this one to five to look more like a fraction, one over five. And I'm gonna set that equal to, so let's see, one is the amount of seniors, two underclassmen. So I need seniors on top, which I know is 125. And then what I'm trying to find is the number of underclassmen. So I'm gonna call that my X, okay? And in this one, if I cross multiply, I get one times X is just X. And five times 125 is 625, 625. So there, right, right there is our answer. There's nothing with this X where you don't need to divide or anything like that. We can just say 625 underclassmen. All right, here we have a triangle, and actually it's two triangles, kind of a smaller one and then the whole thing. And it's asking us to find the length of AB, all right? So we need to create some sort of a proportion or ratio um, based off of this triangle. And the way you do that is you're gonna start kind of um, along the point where the information kind of is along both sides, all right? So for example, I have information along this side and this side, Again, I'm trying to find A, B, so A, B, I'll call maybe X. And then you just run down one side and run down the other and set those as your, um, your two fractions for your proportion. What I mean by that is if I run down the top side, I have X over five. 
x over 5. And then same thing, if I run down the bottom side, all based off this point, I'm going to have 12 over 6. So equals 12 over 6. And this just turns into a problem like we had before, where we cross multiply and solve for x. All right, so x times 6 is 6x. 5 times 12 is going to be 60. And so if I divide both sides by 6, x equals 10. And then I always like to put it back into my picture to see if it makes sense. And in this case, it does, right? For the two parts that I have both of, 5 is a little bit less than 6. And so now for what I filled in, 10 is a little bit less than 12. That makes sense. All right, last problem for this video. It's asking us to solve for x, given these kind of three parallel lines. If those triangles weren't there, we could still know they're parallel because these are all going to be corresponding angles, which makes those lines parallel to each other. Um, but any, in either case, uh, we need to, sh to find x, all right? So kind of like, remember the last one where we started at that point and we ran down one side and ran down the other? Well, if I were to continue these lines, right, just like that, it would make a point, all right? And then what we can do is still run down one side, run down the other, and make our proportion. So if I go again, kind of starting here along the top, that's going to be 3.5 over 3. And then same thing along the bottom, going in that same direction, we're going to have 9 over x. So equals 9 over x to make our proportion. Cross multiply and we'll solve it. Let me do it real quick for you. All right, so after solving for x, it kind of gives me a long decimal, but I'm just rounded a little bit to 7.14. Again, let me put it back into my problem, 7.14. Let's see if this makes sense. Well, if I look at these two, nine is about, you know, a little bit less than three times as big as 3.5. 7.4, again, yeah, a little bit less than three times as big as three. So this definitely makes sense. Right, did this video help you out? If it did, please help me out by liking it down below, as well as you might find this video helpful as you continue to study for your first semester geometry final. Catch you in the next one.